without further ado, we're going to get started with our first group. This is Project Team Corrupted Spreadsheet. Um, and you're going to be presenting us your work, which is called Cookaroo. Uh, take it away, Stefan. Well, thank you very much for this lovely introduction. I'm really excited. We are really excited to be here. I know that a lot of us like cooking and very often we resort to online recipes, but we found there's like some problems with that. The first problem is, well, if you are like me, then um, you probably have a browser with like a folder and loads of bookmarks for recipes. And it's a little bit difficult to like access them. It's just a little bit of a pain. And then um, could you please show the next slide, James? Yeah. It's a little bit of a pain and also if you use a recipe and if you change ingredients or amounts, you can't really edit it. So the next time you cook, you forgot everything that you've done before. So that's problem number one. And then we have problem number two. We all know these blog posts like recipes and you have to scroll like through a wall of text and pictures to get to, to the very bottom where you can see the instructions. And then so we thought about this and we came up with Cookaroo, which solves all these problems. Cookaroo is a web application and an online recipe book. And basically what you can do, you can search for recipes online, import them and save them in your account. You can edit and refine them in your account online. And most importantly, you can use them in an interactive way. We are really excited to show you our product. And by we, I mean the kitchen crew who um, made this product happen. And basically, let's meet the chefs. So I'm Stefan. Then we have Tiffany, who is going to talk about the tech stack. Marius will say a few words about challenges. And last but not least, we have Kef, who's taking over now to show you our product demo. Thank you, Stefan. So, demo time indeed. I'm excited. I will be excited. This happened to us as well. Ah, here we go. This is Cookaroo. So, welcome to Cookaroo. Um, first of all, we've already logged in with Auth0. Uh, we didn't think you needed to watch logging in. Uh, that's my personal cookbook there. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a recipe. So at the moment, this recipe will be added to our backend API. Um, now, I think most of us were pretty comfortable when we got onto backend because we got back to that security of unit testing. We were all happy to do that. Um, this is going to give away my secret malt loaf recipe, which, to be fair, you may not want to try because it's just one cup of bran, and then we're going to cook it at 180 and probably have the driest malt loaf that you've ever had in your life but we will be able to see the steps on screen and then add recipe and then hopefully it will have landed in our backend api that's a stock image obviously that's not malt loaf now what we can also do is you can go and have a look at our third party api and uh, by using this third party api you'd have access to literally tens of thousands of recipes um, you can search these recipes by various category we've looked at korean we'll look at french and then now we're going to look at my personal favorite, Chinese food. And I think we're going to go for cauliflower fried rice. And let's just check. Yes, Steph can eat that. That's definitely vegan. It's definitely vegetarian. So we're going to save that to our recipe book. And then hopefully, when we go to recipes, ah, it's there. Lovely. So there's the cauliflower rice. Uh, we'll bring up the cauliflower rice recipe. And yeah, this is the recipe format. Now, what we could do is we could edit it. So if you wanted to say, add a bit of extra garlic, maybe a bit of extra chili. In this case, we've not tried the recipe yet. We're going to go straight for play recipe. Um, so here we have check boxes. You can check your way through all of the ingredients to check that you've got everything. And then let's get cooking. And here we have step-by-step -step instructions, nice and simple, one step at a time. Obviously, you may want to go back. If you want to, you can, or we can continue through our recipe. Or maybe perhaps somebody just came to the door. Well, we can take a break and we can get back going and pick up the recipe where we go. We'd obviously continue and make this wonderful recipe. And that's the end of the demonstration. So uh, it's over to Tiff talking about the tech stack. Thank you, Kev. Um, so for our project, we were, of course, really keen to try new technologies. Um, as we've had some experience with SQL before, we really wanted to try out a um, non-relational database. So um, we chose uh, MongoDB because of its JSON-like document structure. So we figured that this would make it really easy to deal with the uh, responses that we get from our um, requests to our third-party APIs. And also Mongo lets you um, change the structure of your documents. So we figured that this would give us um, flexibility and peace of mind in case we needed to change anything with the project further down the line. 
Um, for our front end, we decided to use Svelte. Um, we heard about Svelte while on the course. Um, as it's quite new, it's got a lot of interest in the JS world, and so we thought we'd give it, we'd give it a try. Um, and so Svelte um, compiles at build time, so that makes it really nice and quick, and we, we really enjoyed that. And um, a really nice feature of Svelte is that it gives you accessibility warnings. So it was really nice to have that to kind of give us a reminder to make our site as accessible as possible so that everyone can use it. And with the uh, tech stack covered, I'm going to go ahead and pass it on to Maria so we can talk about some of the challenges we faced during our project. Thank you, Tiffany. Thank you, us. Challenges. Yeah. Where would Being all the excitement, all the fun in a project with no obstacles. Of course, we had our challenges. And it was fun, though, dealing with them. One constant, constant challenge was spiking, learning, and implementing the new tech. Svelte, for instance, was such an excellent to work, uh, tool to work with. We enjoyed it, but we d discovered along the way that Svelte documentation is not very comprehensive. The number of packages is pretty low, and there are not too many built-in tools and libraries. That's understandable, though. It's still a young open source JavaScript ecosystem with a growing community, yet the support still has a lot of room impro improvement. All these drawbacks did not shadow our experience using Svelte at all. Then I could briefly mention minor technical issues with tools behaving differently on Ubuntu and Mac, which all know that. Then it's Zoom. We all love Zoom, probably, but kind of experienced uh, Zoom fatigue, uh, having the, the, some technical issues causing interruptions and limitations when we just wanted rapidly going into a meeting to brainstorm some ideas. Then maybe our, the most significant challenge for all of us, time constraint. Even though it has probably beat up, built up the pressure, it pushed us to give uh, the best, our best. Keeping a positive attitude and showing fantastic teamwork, we made it through. Uh, I just want to mention that we are keen and excited for our future projects to use some new tech like AWS, which is a great platform with an incredible array of tools uh, with which you can integrate pretty much everything in your project. But doing the spiking, we realized that learning curve was too long to use it for this one. We would also like and are excited to extend the voice control and text-to-speech features for our app. That's pretty much all from me. I hand it over to Steph. Mm -hmm. well, uh, thank you, Marius. So where, where do we like, finish off? What are our like, final thoughts or takeaways? The number one is like spiking, which for all of us was like a new method. And we really appreciated the value of it. This idea of like being unafraid to dive into a new technology, understand how it works and fail fast at the beginning of the project as opposed to later on. The second point, communication, frequent open communication. And to just get to a point where everyone has the same understanding of the product and the process is almost half the battle. And the third one, flexibility. Um, Plans are nothing, planning is everything, which is basically this whole idea of like being determined about your goal, but flexible how to achieve it. Plans and we had days where our plans changed like several times a day, and it's just about having the right mindset and attitude and the tools in place to, to cater for that. I definitely can speak from a personal experience. In the first week, I was quite like nervous about like constant changes, and it made me feel a little bit uncomfortable. But later on, like the teamwork, I think worked really well, and you made me feel more comfortable. And then later on, it was really like easy to implement new changes along the way. With that being said, um, at the beginning of the project, we wanted to solve a problem. We think we, we solved it, and we're really happy and proud of what we achieved. And um, we're really excited to take these skills and use them in our future jobs. Um, that's it from us. Um, if you have any questions, um, fire away. Thank you.